Today we're talking about the fascinating topic of shutter speed. Don't click away just yet. I wanna show you some examples of why it's important to use the correct shutter speed for certain situations. Now I'll be totally honest, when it comes to videos like this, talking head segments, filming static things outside, if I need to, I will often just crank that shutter speed way up to get the right exposure because in all honesty, most people probably can't tell. However, when it's really necessary to use the 180 degree rule is when it comes to speed and movement. The 180 degree rule is very straightforward. Basically, you just wanna make sure that whatever frame rate you're shooting at, your shutter speed is as close to double as that frame rate. So if you're shooting 24 frames a second, the closest you're gonna get is 1 50th of a second for your shutter speed. If you want some slow-mo, you're shooting at 60 frames a second, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're using one one twentieth of a second. And if you want even more slow motion and you're shooting 120 frames a second, then you're gonna have to go as close as you can to that, which would be 240, but you can't choose a shutter speed of one 240th, so you'd go one 250th of a second. That, in essence, is the 180 degree rule. It's as simple as that. Let's go outside and show you an example of how using the correct shutter speed is gonna make your image look better more natural. So it's a really bright day out right now. You probably can't tell, but I do have the shutter speed cranked. It's at one one thousandth of a second right now. I'm shooting F2, and I want to continue to be able to shoot F2, but if I drop the shutter speed to what it needs to be, one fiftieth, it looks like that, and, well, no. So, I have to have it cranked to one one thousandth of a second. And for this kind of thing, just talking head, there's really not a lot of movement, and it's fine in all honesty. Some of you are going to say you can tell the difference. I think it's fine. I'm going to go buy on my one wheel, shooting at one one thousandth of a second and we'll see how it looks. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the one wheel but I'm going to put an ND filter on the front here which will actually allow me to use one fifty of a second and then I'm abiding by the 180 degree rule and I'm using the right shutter speed. This is the Pumbund. In case you're wondering, say what you will. Yes, it costs a lot of money, but you pay for what you get. Gerald Undone did a whole bunch of reviews on these and compared all these, and this one definitely came out the best. It's a great pumvund. All right, now let's go buy on the one wheel again, but with the right shutter speed, abiding by the 180 degree rule. So it'll be a subtle change, but you should see a little bit more motion blur and just looks more pleasing. Here's a side by side. It might not be that evident, but let's slow it down a little bit and you can see in more detail what's going on. In the bottom shot, every single frame has motion blur. In the top shot, it just looks like a photo. You don't want that jagged photo look. You want that motion blur, it just looks nicer. So I think you'll agree with me that when it comes to speed and movement, using the 180 degree rule, using the correct shutter speed just makes things look way more natural cinematic if you want to call it that and you should abide by that 180 degree rule when you need to. If you're a long time subscriber to this channel you'll have seen me do this before but I want to show it again because it's very relevant to this entire video and that is to show you in real time how shutter speed can affect motion blur using a fidget spinner. So I'm going to spin this, I have my aperture locked off at f4 and my ISO is going to be set to automatic and I'm going to show you as I change the shutter speed, how the motion blur of this gets affected. And I'll talk to you about what shutter speed that we're at as this is spinning. And you should be able to see a substantial change in motion blur from the 1 50th we'll start at to whatever we end up at. So let me get that set up for you now. All right, so you'll see now that we're on auto ISO. This is why the exposure looks the way it does. But for the purpose of this video, this will do fine. So let's put a nice long spin on here, hopefully. And we're starting at 1 50th of a second. 1 60th, 1 80th. So what you're gonna see is the motion blur slowly starts to go as I go up with shutter speed. 1 1 25th of a second, 1 60th, 200th, 2 50th. You can see all kinds of weird things are happening now. It doesn't look the same. But if we drop back down to 1 50th, it still looks the same. 200th, 250, 320, shutter speed is now 400, 500, 640, 800, 1000, 1250, 1600, 2000, auto ISO is now having a hard go, it's maxed itself at 6400, so we're going to stop in a second, 3200 and 4000, super dark, but you can see there, it barely looks like it's moving, it looks like it's slowed right down, but if we drop back down to 1 50th of a second, you'll see it's actually still going exactly the same speed. Once more. 
that's 2,500. And back down to 150th. Still going the same speed. I think that kind of speaks for itself, to be honest with you. Let's go back to non-auto ISO. So hopefully that gave you an example and helped you understand a little bit more of how your shutter speed affects the way that your image looks. And when using the 180 degree rule, it does make a big difference to how speed and motion can look on video. So hopefully you got something out of that today. Hopefully it helped you understand things a little bit more. If you did, great. Put a little comment down below just saying that this was a good video or not. Anyway, appreciate you watching. Do those things down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. If I want to do any form of moot, another car. Anyone would think that's a road. Using to the eye, and that's using movement and using the correct shutter speed should be done properly. To I don't know what I'm doing there.